Welcome back to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on dividing decimals. Some stuff you should already know are uh, the basics of decimals, uh, decimal place values, uh, basic division, and basic subtraction. So make sure you know these and let's get started. First of all, there are some terms you should make sure you know and are very comfortable with. Divisor is one of them. It's very important you know what number is the divisor. The divisor is the number that goes into or divides another number. And the dividend is the number that is being divided. For example, let's take 3,421 divided by 35. Well, our first number here, 3,421, is our dividend. And the reason why it's our dividend is because it's the number being divided. Our other number, 35, is actually our divisor. And the reason why it's our divisor is because it's the number doing the dividing. It's the number going into 3,421. Therefore, again, it's our divisor. Here we have 5,028 divided by 12. Well, whenever you say divided by, you're basically specifying what each of those is already. So our first number, 5,028, is our dividend. It's the number under the house in the little house notation. This is what uh, I like to call it, the house notation. And it's our dividend because it's inside. Therefore, it's the number being divided. And the number outside, the 12 here, is our divisor. Because we're going to see how many times 12 can go into 5,028. Here, even though it looks like a fraction, this actually also represents division, where the top number, 275, is our dividend because it's being divided by the denominator or the bottom which is 25 that makes it our divisor so let's say we have 32.5 divided by 0 0.05 now there are four steps to dividing decimals our first step is to turn the divisor into a whole number well how do we do that we move the decimal to the right as needed here our number is 0 0.05 in order to make this whole, we need to move our decimal two places to the right. And then, step two, we move the decimal and the dividend the same number of places as the divisor. Here, we had a decimal point here and then moved it over two places to the right. Since we moved that decimal two places to the right, we're also going to move this decimal two places to the right. Well, the problem is that we only have one number here, and we have to move the decimal two places. So what do we do? We annex a zero. And now we have enough numbers to move the decimal two times to the right. And step three is to rewrite the question. So now we have 3,250 divided by 5. Our fourth step isn't really a step, but just to do our work, to actually divide. So now we have 3,250 divided by 5. And our division is going to be very straightforward. Well, how many times does 5 go into 3? It doesn't. So we have to see how many times 5 goes into 32. And that's going to be 6. 6 times 5 is 30, so we subtract that. That's going to give us 2. And we bring down our 5. So now we see how many times 5 can go into 25. And that's going to be 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25, so I subtract that. That's going to give me 0. And I bring down my last 0. Well, 5 goes into 0, 0 times. That's going to be 0. Subtract 0 and you get 0. And your answer is 650. One thing I really do want to stress. This is a mistake that tons of students make. They see this last column here is 0. So they don't work to the last column. And then they'll just stop right here. And they'll think their answer is 65. That is not the case. Whatever the last digit under the house is, you have to make sure you go to that digit. Otherwise, you're not dividing the entire number, and you'll get the answer completely wrong. How about here? We have 33 divided by 0.6. Now, the same four steps apply no matter what the notation looks like. Here, it's not like the last example where we had the house notation. Here, we have it represented by a fraction. All we have to do, though, is put it into the house notation, okay, the long division notation. And we just do it just like this. So now we have 33 inside the house and 0.6 outside. So now we'll divide. What do we do? Step one, turn the divisor into a whole number. Well, 
Last time we had to move two places. That doesn't mean every single time you do a division question that you're going to move two places. Specifically for this question, we don't need to move two, we only need to move one space. Okay, so we're moving one space to the right. And what happens next in step two? We move the decimal in our dividend the same number of places as the divisor. We only moved our decimal once here. Well, where is there a decimal here in this number? 33, we don't see it. But there's always a decimal at the end of every whole number. So you'll have the number 33, and at the very end of the 33, you'll see a decimal right here. So now what do we do? Now that we know where our decimal is, we have to have a number that we can go past. So we have to put a zero there. Now that we've annexed our zero, we can move one place to the right. And now step three is to rewrite the question. This is now 330, 330 because there's 330 there, 330. And this is now just the number six. So we'll rewrite it and then we'll do our work and divide. Can six go into three? No, it can't. But can six go into 33? Yes, it can. How many times? Five. 5 times 6 is 30, so we'll subtract that. 33 minus 30 is 3. Then we'll bring down our 0. And how many times does 6 go into 30? Well, that's going to be 5. And 6 times 5 is 30. We subtract that, we get 0, and therefore we're done with our work. Our answer is 55. How about 12.6 divided by 12? Remember, you have to make sure the problem has long division notation or house notation. However you want to call it, tomatoes, tomatoes, it doesn't matter what you call it, as long as you put it into that notation. So, let's do that. It's going to look just like this. So now we've got 12.6 divided by 12. Well, let's start with our steps. Step 1. Turn the divisor into a whole number. Well, we already have that. 12 is already a whole number. There's no decimal to move, there's nothing to switch around there, so we don't do it. Okay? Move the decimal, don't need. Number two, move the decimal and the dividend the same number of places as the divisor. Well, how many places did we move the decimal in our divisor? Zero. So the same thing's gonna happen here. We're gonna move our decimal zero places. We're gonna leave it right where it is. And step three, rewrite the question. And step four is to divide, and we can just bring our decimal right up top. So now, how many times does 12 go into 12? Well, 12 goes into 12 one time. That's going to be 12. Subtract that, we get 0. We'll bring down our 6. Well, how many times does 12 go into 6? It can't. It's too big. So we're going to put 0 times. Well, we still have a 6 remaining. So we'll have 6 minus 0, and that's going to be 6. And then we have to annex a 0 because we still have to get rid of the 6. We have 6 remaining. Bring down our 0, and now we have 60. And how many times does 12 go into 60? That's 5 times. 5 times 12 is 60. Subtract that. We get 0. So therefore, our final answer is 1.05. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go. Okay, so let's go over our answers. Number one is 118. Number two is 15. Number three is 1.47. Number four is 0 .003. Number five is 0 .006. And number six is the number 50. Let's review. The number that is being divided is called the dividend. The number that is dividing or going into the other number is called the divisor. In order to divide decimals, the blank must be a whole number, the divisor. If a number does not have a decimal, it is actually at the end of the number. If you need to move the decimal, but there are no place values, you must annex a zero. If the decimal in the divisor is moved, then what happens to the decimal in the dividend? Well, we said this before, the decimal is moved the same number of places. If in your divisor you move your decimal one space, then you're going to move the decimal in your dividend one space as well. 
if you move the decimal in your divisor zero places, then you're going to move the decimal in your dividend zero places as well. You're not going to move it. So whatever happens to the, to the decimal in the divisor is exactly what happens to the decimal in your dividend. After all decimals are moved, you should always rewrite the question. I've seen tons of students make mistakes because they have marks all over their paper after showing where the decimal moves and how it moves, and then they mess up their whole answer because they didn't know what decimal went where. So I highly recommend you always rewrite your question. In order to make the divisor a whole number, we must move the decimal over as needed. If the question is not written in long division notation, it should be rewritten in long division notation. Remember, you have to make sure that you're uh, able to divide. So the only way that you're able to divide is by using long division notation or uh, the house notation. Again, tomatoes, tomatoes, doesn't matter what you call it as long as you're doing that division. If there is a decimal in the dividend after being moved, you should bring the decimal up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.